White-tailed deer is one of the most recognizable and revered wild animals in North America. Few animals capture the hearts, minds, and imaginations like the whitetail, or Virginia deer as it was first called. It is beautiful, graceful, and cunning, and the source of lean, delicious venison for millions of people each year. Whitetail is one of six members of the deer family in North America. The others include mule deer, black-tailed deer, elk, moose, and caribou. For those of you who live in the eastern half of the United States, the whitetail is by far the most common deer species you'll encounter. The whitetail is the most numerous and widely distributed big game animal in the world, ranging from central Canada down through the United States, Mexico, Central America, and even northern South America. There are nearly 30 million whitetails in the United States alone, which is likely more than when Christopher Columbus set foot on this continent. They can live in mountains, prairies, forests, deserts, and even jungles. And of course, they can also live in our backyards. This is due to their ability to adapt to humans and the incredible number of foods they can eat, literally hundreds of species. Deer are primarily browsers, meaning they concentrate on weeds and shrubs, acorns and berries, far more than grazers, which eat primarily grasses. The whitetail is named for its large, fluffy white tail that they wave or flag as they run from danger. This is in stark contrast to their brownish gray winter coats, which blend nicely into the fall landscape. This coat is replaced during spring with a more reddish colored version that helps them stay cooler during the warm summer months. A typical herd of whitetails contains bucks, does, and fawns. Bucks are males one year of age or older. Does are females one year of age or older. And fawns are both males and females under one year of age. Fawns can be further classified as buck fawns and doe fawns. While the lifespan of a whitetail is typically less than four years in the wild, some have been known to survive into their late teens and even early 20s. The oldest known whitetail lived 24 years in captivity. A typical whitetail family group is made up of related females, mothers, daughters, granddaughters, and their offspring, both males and females under one and a half years of age. In time, the young bucks will be kicked out of the family group and forced to move to new areas to live. This process is called dispersal and is simply nature's way of ensuring that males and females from the same family don't interbreed. The area in which a deer lives is known as its home range. While it varies considerably, a buck's home range is typically around 750 to 1,000 acres, whereas a doe's is roughly half of this. Unlike some species of deer that form large herds containing both bucks and does, white-tailed bucks and does lead largely separate lives, except during the breeding season. During the late winter, bucks often form bachelor groups, which are simply groups of bucks of similar age or rank. These groups stay together throughout the spring and summer, but break up before the breeding season or rut, which typically occurs in November throughout much of the whitetail's range. However, the timing of the rut can be highly variable in the southern United States. Male whitetails grow antlers, whereas females do not. During a buck fawn's first year of life, it grows only small nubs or buttons. That's why these youngsters are often called nubbin or button bucks. During a buck's second and subsequent years of life, they grow larger antlers each year, at least through six and a half or seven and a half years of age. The weight of a buck can vary considerably based on where it lives, what it eats, and its age. But they average around 170 to 200 pounds, though a few have weighed in at more than 375 pounds. Does weigh considerably less, with most weighing around 80 to 100 pounds at maturity. Whitetails are very good mothers. The first time a doe gives birth, approximately 195 to 200 days after breeding the previous fall, it will be to a single fawn. From that point forward, they typically give birth to twins every year. Triplets are rare, but do occur, especially in areas with exceptional habitat quality. Whitetails have a unique fawn survival strategy the first month of life. Instead of trying to keep up with its mother, fawns hide by lying motionless for days on end, only getting up to nurse or to be moved to a new hiding spot by its mother. This lasts for nearly a month before the fawn is large enough and strong enough to keep up with its mother. Now, as you can imagine, fawns are very vulnerable during this period, and many are taken by predators such as coyotes and bears. While whitetails don't have a complex language like humans, they do communicate with each other more often than many realize. They use more than a dozen calls to communicate everything from danger to aggression to attraction. The most common vocalizations are grunts and snorts, and hunters often use calls that mimic these sounds while hunting. Whitetails also use behavior and body language to communicate. 
aggressive behaviors like raising their heads high above another deer, laying their ears back, or walking sideways and stiff-legged are clear signals of aggression. If the warning is not heeded, more aggressive behaviors are likely to follow, including flailing or kickboxing among does. Bucks will often make all of their hair stand up on its end, making themselves look darker and more menacing, which may ultimately be followed by a fight involving the clashing of antlers and violent pushing and shoving until one of the bucks gives up. Well, that's a quick overview of the basic biology and behavior of the white-tailed deer. But there's so much more you can learn by visiting the Quality Deer Management Association website at QDMA.com.